สถานที่วัดคือสถานที่เขตอภัยทานเราจะไม่ทำให้คนอื่นเดือดร้อนเราจะทำให้เกิดประโยชน์คือมีความสุขมีเมตตาต่อกันไม่เบียดเบียนกันไม่ทำร้ายกันให้อภัยกันได้ I just got back from Bin Tabat, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to soak my feet and mention a few things, just so I don't forget in the future. If you remember from the last video, we're visiting a different temple. It's still a jungle temple, but it's two kilometers off of a road, as opposed to. 45 minutes at our local jungle temple. This place is uh, really nice, really beautiful. The temple grounds are just very, very nice. As with every temple, there's wood and construction and yeah, half-completed projects everywhere. That's to be expected because they're always making the temples nicer and nicer. And however many monks there are, the amount goes up and down. So sometimes a guti, the dormitory where a monk, single monk, will stay, uh, sometimes they fall into disrepair if they haven't had enough monks or anybody staying in that particular guti for a while. That's a little bit of a sidebar. I just wanted to mention uh, today I didn't know I was going to bin tabat. Yesterday we didn't. It was Bungatin ceremony and celebration with uh, parades and food and all that kind of thing. We did bin tabat only in a ceremonious type of way. Everybody's lined up. The local Thai people line up on the grounds of the wat, and you walk by. You're still barefoot and wearing the appropriate robe. It's called a G1, but you're just walking in a great big line, and everybody puts a little token amount of rice or some kind of snack or something in your bot, the vessel that we receive alms and eat the food out of. But today, I had no idea that I was gonna go into their local village here, and I did, and it was way different from the way we do it at our monastery. But it was interesting to see the slight subtle differences in the way they've been Tabat here. Each time that we received alms, when someone put rice into our bot, we'd stop and say a little prayer. Not a long one, maybe a minute long of Bali language. We don't do that at our monastery, and it would be difficult when you have all these houses right next to each other, putting rice and snacks into your bot. If you said a one-minute-long poem slash prayer at every single house, it would just take forever, and the people would be standing. You know what I mean? It just doesn't really make sense. It wouldn't make sense. So the way that they do here is interesting, and for me it was a learning experience. And that's one of the good things about when there are, I guess they call t e t s u g a n holidays or Buddhist celebrations, where you go to different temples. You stay with them, you meet the other monks, you hang out with them, and you see that the, you see the way that that they do things. And for me that was interesting. That was an experience. I only have about 20 minutes getting back from Bin Tabat. You have to go arrange everything in the sala. Sala is a ceremonial hall, not the big one where we had the great big celebration yesterday, but they have a smaller one where they eat. And you set up your bot, and you set up your pabunang, which is a cloth that goes on top of a pad where you sit, where you eat. And you just make sure everything's lined up correctly and properly, and you you take off the cover. From your bot and fold it up. Everything is very procedural. So you get back from Bin Tabat, you do that, 
and I, I came back and I'm taking this time to soak my feet. I found some old shampoo. It's interesting if you look on the shelf when you walk in to these communal places where you sleep. For me, it's a tree house and I'm staying in a tent in that tree house. But on the little shelves, they're not really shelves, it's just wood from where they built the place. So you only have about this much overhang. There's old bits of shampoo and, and things like that. And people donate just bags of stuff. And I noticed in this one, we have uh, toothpaste. Oh, I like this toothpaste. I might use that. Toothbrushes, but I noticed that there's a scrub sponge here which I'm going to use for my feet. I haven't had one the entire time. So that's that's kind of nice. I'm going to use this to scrub the blood and uh, dirt and residue from band-aids <laughs> off of my feet. And let me tell you, this this Thai toothpaste, I'm going to use this. This this stuff is good. I mean, it's herbal and this is called Dok Bo Ku. I don't know if I've tried this one, but it's really, really strong flavor of herbs. And I like it. As far as fluoride and how well it protects your teeth and stuff, I don't know. But it's got one side in Thai. There's the label, Dok Bo Ku. And then in English, Dok Bo Ku. Dok Bo means uh, lotus flower. What does the ku mean? I don't know what ku means. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, record this. A couple ideas I had were that guy OTR does great food videos on YouTube. I'd like to contact him and see if he'd be interested in doing something about food at the Thai temples. A real quick summary this morning. I was woken completely by surprise, had no idea I was going to bend to bot. Got up, wiped the sleep from my eyes, threw my G1 on and went to the sala and we walked through the jungle, real like total jungle jungle like you imagine a jungle to be with monkeys swinging around and stuff except I didn't see any monkeys. And it's a well-worn trail. And then we came out on concrete and took the concrete straight. And when we came back, I realized, wow, it was like a hole in the jungle pierced. When I came back, I thought that was kind of neat and kind of cinematic too. We're walking down this road and you just see a hole in the jungle, like a doorway. And we just, boop, we just enter that and kind of disappear. And through the windy pass back to the temple, that was kind of cool. I just thought, if I had a drone and, you know, somebody could really make this into a movie or a TV show. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I got to get ready, wash my feet, and go eat. Aloha. Satu.